Hi, in this video let's try to visualize gravity and I want to share a couple of very simple tricks which will give you an intuitive understanding of the phenomenon. Since when I saw this kind of visualization for the first time, it didn't help me much to understand how gravity works. But maybe it's just me. What we know about gravity so far, it's considered to be a curvature space-time continuum. Maybe it's a force and graviton mediates gravity. Or maybe not. We know that inertial mass is indistinguishable from gravitational. I wonder why by the way, and it looks like that all matter in the whole universe gravitates towards each other. And also there is a huge issue with building quantized model of gravity. General relativity and quantum mechanics doesn't fit each other well. So here's a couple tricks which will help you to master gravity. Gravity has four ingredients, movement, acceleration, matter and space. So as for the first trick, try to think about space as fluid. In this visualization we will use water. And as for the second trick, matter and antimatter. Here is proton and antiproton which are entangled. Entanglement is not required by the way, it's just easier to hold it in hand. Um, let's take a closer look. These particles have a couple of important properties. First of all, if proton touch antiproton, um, they both will integrate back to space. But don't worry, I have this pair pair so we'll be able to proceed. And ideally it would be great to make both of them out of ice. But it is what it is. But what is more important, the main property of antiproton is this. It radiates space. And symmetrically the proton does this. It pulls the space in. You can imagine matter as sort of sponge with infinite capacity. Any particle that can pull in space like this is considered to have a mass. Keeping this in mind, let's pour a bit of space in aquarium. We can use antimatter to do that, but I already have a bit of spare space ready, so we don't need to wait. And now let's put matter in space. On the first glance nothing is happening, right? Maybe a bit of quantum fluctuation, so let's color the space. And this is the visualization of gravity itself. If you think about it as a flow of space, a lot of things start to make sense. You don't need graviton since in this case gravity is not a force. You can implement gravitational lensing at no additional cost. Now it's easy to understand why massless particles like photons are influenced by gravity. You don't need concept of dark matter, it can be naturally replaced with the flow of space. And you don't need curvature of space to enable gravity. Like it so far? Hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Now let's quickly address the curvature of time. Why is inertial mass indistinguishable from gravitational one? Imagine you standing on the surface of the Earth. What is happening with space in our case? It flows through us towards the center of the planet. And what is happening when we move through space? Time slows down. And all this space not only moves through us, it moves with acceleration. And that causes inertia. We call it weight in case of gravity, but basically it's pure inertia. You see, we don't need the concept of curvature of space-time continuum. It's just an inertia caused by accelerating flow of space as it approaches the planet, through the matter on the surface of the planet. If you want to dive a bit deeper, for example, why we can treat space as fluid, how the universe is expanding and what the dark energy is, or why time slows down when the speed goes up? Make sure to watch this video where the whole concept is expanded. On the other hand, antimatter can be visualized like this. Basically, we can think that antimatter squeezes space out of itself. Antisponge of infinite capacity. If we scope out electromagnetism starting at some distance, one proton and one antiproton basically don't see each other. In almost any configuration of four particles, like this one, or for example, like this one. We will end up with matter gravitated to each other. And antimatter has only two options, 
to be pulled in by massive objects and annihilated or to be scattered in space as separate antiparticles, not even cloud or dust, just separate atoms of antimatter. And recently antimatter has been found, ironically currently it's treated as normal matter. It's called warm-hot intergalactic medium, the answer to the missing baryon problem appears to be the best fit for the missing antimatter. If you think about this, we see only half of the matter today, because another half has already annihilated with the same amount of antimatter, which were unlike enough to be close to the concentration of mass and which were pulled in by gravity. And this process, by the way, happening even today. And as for the second half of antimatter, where most likely you will find it if it radiates space and annihilates with matter? Most probably between galaxies as separate particles. As for gravity once again, treat space as fluid. Remember that particles with mass pull in space. When you stand on the surface of the planet, all this space flows through you with acceleration towards the center of mass. The flow of space causes time to slow down and acceleration of the flow causes inertia. Now you're an expert in gravity. Anyway, if you like the video, consider to hit the like button, subscribe and I'll see you in the next videos. Bye.